Hello there, and welcome to this episode of Force Ghost Conversations. This is your host, Anthony King, and this week, special guests Mary and Chaz Perdue join the show to talk about their experiences on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Now, before we get started, I'm inviting you to join the conversation with us. We can be found on Twitter and Hive at Force Ghost Pod. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok just by searching Forest Ghost Conversations. Also, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on your listening set of choice. Plus, Forest Ghost Conversations is live on Patreon. If you're a fan of the podcast and would like to consider pledging your support, there will be a link in the episode description for you to check out the various tiers offered. Finally, please be sure to check out our Tee Public store to buy some Forest Ghost Conversations merchandise. And without further ado, it is time to gather around the campfire for some Force Ghost Conversations. All right, everybody, welcome back to another installment of Forest Ghost Conversations, and I am so thrilled to welcome first-time guests on Forest Ghost Conversations, Mary and Chaz Perdue. Now, they are, of course, no strangers to the Star Wars podcasting realm, and of course, it is my great pleasure to welcome them to the show here. So, let's start with you, Mary. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Anthony. Thank you so much for having us on. Of course, of course. Chaz, welcome to the show. How are you doing? uh also pretty good thank you excellent excellent now of course you both are here to chat all about the halcyon and your experiences on the galactic star cruiser but let's go back to the beginning long before the opening of the galactic star cruiser also known as the halcyon what were your initial reactions to it even being announced Uh, i know that you're both big fans of star wars and of the disney parks and I'm just curious to get a sense of your immediate thoughts for this endeavor. So let's start with you, Chaz. What, what were your immediate thoughts upon the announcement of this endeavor? I, first of all, thought that was really cool. They were doing a whole Star Wars themed cruise on land hotel yeah. idea. Sounded really cool. Looked cool in all the concept. Uh, originally never expected to go on it, though, but... Um, it had my full curiosity from the moment it was announced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a bonkers idea to begin with, right? But it's like on everyone's bucket list of like, wow, they're going to do this? Disney's going to do this? Let's see what the possibilities are. Mary, what did you think when you first heard about this initiative? I thought it was fantastic. Um, we had done a, three Disney Cruise Lines cruises, you know, actually at sea cruises. Mm-hmm. The third one that we did was actually the Star Wars Day at Sea, the seven-day cruise back in, I think, 2017, maybe. And so we were like, okay, great. You know, we're thinking it's going to be along the same lines as as a Disney cruise right. and probably the same price point. Um, so we were absolutely excited about it, talking about it. Yes, we're going to try to do this. But then when the price point was announced, we're like, whoa, whoa hold on. <laughs> you know, so, which yeah. unfortunately is what happened with a lot of people. And I think that, you know, obviously has been, um, you know, to its detriment. And, and the reason this is the, the last week or by the time probably this airs, you know, it will have already closed. But um you know, at, at our recording time, you know, this is the last week, the last three cruises are on it um, over the next five, six days. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we were excited about it. Um, thought it looked fantastic. We've done celebrations. We've done Star Wars weekends. Like I said, the day at sea with Disney Cruise Line and we were there for it, but um, that price point hit hard. So we had to kind of, like Chad said, we had to kind of step back and go, whoa, can we, can we do this? You know, so. But fortunately, you saved up your pennies and you found a way to make it work one way or the other. And now you will be one of, you know, a a good handful, but a handful of folks that can say you've actually been on it. Right. And let's go back to June of 2023 now when you both had your voyage on the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser. Um, Now, before we get into that, though, because I really want to dive into deeply into your experiences Uh, I'm curious, did you watch any videos to prep? Uh, And basically, you know, what I mean by that is how much did you know about the Star Cruiser and the experience of it all 
before you set foot on the ship, the hotel, and the space, whatever you want to call it. Chaz, let's start with you there. <laughs> I, no, I didn't look at anything. <laughs> I've, it wasn't even out of just not trying to spoil myself. It also, I just never really came across anything when I was online. Right. So I, 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 I avoided spoilers just out of nature. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Mary, I want to hear your, your juxtaposition maybe to this one. <laughs> yeah. I was on the other side of that. <laughs> you were the complete other side of it. I was the complete other side. Um, you know, our, our mutual friend Dan Zare went on that first media cruise. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he put up some things. Um, he never really put any spoilery, uh, things up, but he did put a few things up, uh, you talking about it and giving examples of what was going on and then some of the other um, influencers you know also put things up put short videos here and there most of them did not put the entire story out there Um, most of those influencers you know still tried to keep the story the main storyline quiet and and so it wasn't spoiled but you still knew if few things that were going to happen um so i i was very aware of what the 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 sort of the scope of it was going to be and Mm -hmm. and um what to to expect on the base level um but and i think this is one of the issues that disney had it's just really hard to explain what it is and what you experience And so even the videos that I had watched, excuse me, the people that I had listened to on podcasts and and whatnot, you you got, you got a, um, a glimpse of what it was going to be, but until you're actually there doing it, it's, it, it, it doesn't really spoil it, you know, because there's so Mm -hmm. much more to what people um, let out there and talked about. Yeah. So what you see online is only the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, when it comes to this experience. But I'm going to definitely have to keep that in the back of my mind that at least, Mary, you had a lot, 100 percent more (laughs) uh, knowledge about this before going on to the to the to the spaceship, the hotel, whatever you want to call it, uh, versus you, Chaz. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind as we're going through this conversation here to see how that may or may not have affected your experiences as you as you embarked on this journey. And that, I'm ready to get into some of this here. And okay. um, basically, and, and Mary, explain this to me in a bit more detail here. How did you go from, quote unquote, Earth to the Halcyon? How, how does that leap happen? How do you go from our planet to a galaxy far, far away? Um, and then what were your immediate thoughts when you made that journey? <laughs> well, it, it's pretty cool the way they do it. I mean, if you go by the Star Cruiser um on land and you look over at it behind the trees, it really is just a rectangular building um, with no windows or very few windows. Um, But you pull up, you go through a little, you go through a security gate. I mean, you have to have a reservation to be able to get up to the star cruiser. Um, And so you go through a security gate, they have a little droid sitting there, you know, smiling at you and (laughs) as droids can smile, but it's like, you know, it's like a kind of like chopper, that type of a, a droid and uh, but you know the security agent make sure that you're there you're supposed to be there um if you're coming in in your personal car or you know being dropped off um by uber or whatever other people are arrive by uh buses uh i guess um or not really buses but disney if you're staying at a disney resort i think they brought in like many vans and those kinds of things sure, to okay. bring people in so then you you just go to the what is they term as uh, the terminal, and and I'm sure you've seen pictures where people have stood in front of the wall and it says um, um, the Star Cruiser, Galactic Star Cruiser, you know, on the on the concrete wall. Yeah. And um, we we arrived about eleven o'clock, eleven thirty. Um, lots, quite a few people were already there. You you start boarding at one. Hmm. And uh, so while we were waiting, we were fortunately underneath um, underneath the terminal, so we were in the shade. But they brought people water, frozen grapes, you know, walked through and made sure everybody was okay. You dropped off your luggage there. It went into, you know, just a, a bell area, and you didn't see it again. You know, so when you walked on, you only had whatever you wanted to have in your hands. Um, 
you went down a long, uh, a long hallway, and at the end of the hallway is the Halcyon um, logo. And mm-hmm. so a lot of people, you know, stopped there and, and took pictures. Um, they did show a short video, basically a, a safety video, and sort of to let you know <laughs> what to expect. But I mean, like anything else, you have to be safe. Um, but if anybody is aware of Anthony, um, uh, oh shoot, um, Mark Daniels, not Anthony Daniels, Mark Daniels, who uh, works for Disney and, and has done a lot of Star Wars stuff with them, he is the 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 person in the video telling you you know all the safety oh, amazing. stuff. So it's kind of cool. But uh, and then you so many, I guess it was probably about twenty people at a time got onto an elevator, um, but it was your launch. Um, mm. Yeah, so so you launch up to the Halcyon in space, and and you know it's very well themed. Um, it's not like you're on any kind of elevator that you would you know get onto in a regular building. Um, sure. And of course, it had it had screens along the top edge, not the whole wall, but just along the top edge, and so you could see the blue and the green and whatever outside the window. And then when you launched, then you went into space and. And um, anyway, then you could see the Halcyon coming in to focus and, and then docking with the Halcyon. So it was as if you were on a, you know, on a, in a, in a shuttle going up and, and launching in. And then uh, when you get docked, um, they open the doors and you walk right into the atrium. And they, they do it a little bit like an actual Disney cruise where they do take a family at a time. Mm-hmm. And then they escort you through the atrium, give you a couple of heads up about you know, certain things, and they take you straight to your cabin. By the time you get to your cabin, your luggage has already arrived and sitting there waiting for you. So that was kind of nice. Um, and then they explain, this cast member uh, or crew member explains everything in your cabin and how things work and and so forth. And And then from that point, you sort of, you know, start working through your missions, working through your schedule and that we'll talk about mm. here uh, in a little bit. But the atrium is, you know, you walk in and you go, whoa, you know, it's just, <laughs> and, and again, I'd seen videos of it, but it's, it, it's just a very, very nicely done, beautiful colors, um, crisp, clean, um, futuristic space, you know, Star Warsy, the whole nine yards. And um, you just, it's, it's yeah, it it's just like any if you've been on any cruise ship, it's that that when you first walk in, you're going okay, or the main <laughs> lobby of any of the nice resorts, you're like oh, okay, right. <laughs> you know. So it gives you that little wow factor as you as you walk totally, in. Totally. Now, as a person that had no, you know, spoiling to what it looked like on the inside already, Chaz, what did you have that wow factor as well? Yeah, I I was more just kind of really pleased with how everything looked it was just the whole interior designing just the they really did make it feel immersive all the way through oh my gosh wow (laughs) i mean this is just such a wild like just a whole atrium that's just amazing that the thought and the level of detail that then the precision that goes into such a thing like this i mean it's sad that it's going away. I'm already, yeah. I'm already get disappointing myself <laughs> at the end yeah. of, at the end of all this already. Um, but I think some of the coolest things about the Halcyon is that, you know, I, I think th- I, you both may have sat in on the, the Disney Parks panel at Anaheim, or I, I know I sat yes. on. I don't know if you both, but you did okay. Um, and when they talked about the Halcyon, they were like, "All right, here are the." all the different choices that you can make. They showed a slide and it was just like every single avenue and turn you make is a different choice. And just mm-hmm. there's so many things to possibly do on this ship that you're just like, how could you even do it all in one endeavor? You, but you, you cannot. You can't. That's, that's so yeah. right. Impossible. Um, it's it's, impossible. But I want to talk about what you both did on, on your cruises and your expeditions. And, you know, what did your itinerary resemble for like even just day one? Let's so let's start with there. Um, and, you know, let's talk through some of the choices that you made, the activities you underwent, um, the food. Like, let, let's talk about it all. Chaz, what was your itinerary on the first day here? Well, we basically had the same itinerary. Like we did the same things up to a certain point. Okay, got cool. on. First thing we did was we went to the cafeteria because 
Smart. How to get it's not a cafeteria. To it's a dining room. It's the dining Crown room. of Corellia <sighs> dining room. Now Ooh. get it right. <laughs> Ooh. Crown of Corellia. Now we're talking. Into we went to the eating room. <laughs> um, which they have really interesting foods. Like it, it everything's designed to feel immersive, and it was all really good too. Um after that. We went back to our room, pretty sure, for like a split second. I think to check on something, but then it was, there was muster. That's how you say that, right? Muster? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Had muster. Captain and the uh, cruise director, you know, do their, like what a normal cruise would have, the whole speech and all that but then it gets into the lore of the story things how are happening um beforehand you have the play disney app with the data pad i can't remember what it was called uh and on it you have contacts you can message and from there like you get a first message that asks you some questions and depending on how you answer, eases you into like your first bit of what storyline you you want to pursue. I went with the because it asks you what like, it gave you a list of people to choose from, right? And like what you might want to be interested in doing. Is that how it went? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> like and you know are you you do you are you on the resistance side are you on the first order side are you um on the jedi you know do you it, it sort of went those routes do you are you uh are you like hondo are you a smuggler mm. you know so those were the and the questions were framed in a way that they didn't come out and actually say something like that but it was you they know, were subtle yeah they were subtle, <laughs> they were but, subtle. but but you knew what you were answering yeah Amazing. Chaz went many paths. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, how did you answer some of those questions, Chaz? <laughs> well, the first one is just, it just sets you up with like a a beginner kind of quest storyline thing to do. I chose the Jedi one. Ooh. So after muster is over, it you, before muster is when you do the questions and then you get um another message basically says to go talk to one of the people so for uh if you're doing the jedi it was the oh what were they called sajas the sajas i had to go talk to uh asaja and you know say a certain phrase let them know what you're about and from because you're in a proximity to the character uh later on on your data pad you get like another message giving more instructions or just giving more kind of exposition. Mm. Um, and then after that, you kind of just go oh, do whatever it, you just, if you see a group of people that are with one of the main character cast doing something, you can just walk right up and get involved. And because you're near them, uh, your the data pad and your account will ping off of whatever is keeping track of stuff, and then after that is over, you'll get a message from the character, either giving more exposition or saying, "Hey, at this time, meet me here." Uh, I kind of did everything. I was going down the Jedi path. <laughs> I was going. I was trying to. I went down Jedi. I went down. Um, I didn't really get down the smuggler one at all. Like I tried to, but like something didn't line up and it didn't. I I missed some kind of event flag that just it didn't let me go any further. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did first order. I did resistance and I did uh, Saja. Uh, (laughs) The at the end, I because we both got it. Uh at the end of the quests, you get a title. Um, I was hoping to get all three. I only got two of the three that I was mm. working on. I, I got the first order one, which was, I think it was just, it was first order loyalist or it was 
Yeah, I'd have to actually load up and look. Uh, but the Jedi one was Holocron Archivist, which we, my mom and I both got because she was going mainly down the Jedi resistance path. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So you were, you were kind of dabbling your toes into everything. <laughs> yeah. You were, you're, I don't know what side I am. I'm, I'm, I'm on the <laughs> resistance. I'm first order. I'm a Jedi. I'm a smuggler. We'll, <laughs> we'll see where I land. That's kind of how I did it. <laughs> that was a unique approach. Mary, were you a bit more of a straight shooter when it came to choosing a side? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I I, I, uh, I answered the questions more along the resistance side of it. And then mm-hmm. as you go along um, and you get additional questions or you meet up with people like Chaz said or you, you tag along. And, um, and so I, I ended up really more Jedi versus resistance kind of a thing. It, you know, both together, but more right. Jedi, you know, heavy. Um, and then one of the things that we, we didn't mention was the fact that the reason that we cruised when we did is, uh, is Dan Zare put together through uh, the travel agency he always works with um, this trip. And so there were 19, 20 of us of the CWK family that went and, um, and we all chose different paths. I mean, everybody was all over the place. And so you know, you'd pass each other in the hall, um, whatever. And, and, you know, I was in the engineering room for probably 30 minutes helping to hide Chewbacca uh, from mm. the first order. You know, so, but like Chaz said, the, the first, the, the, that first day, you know, the first four or five hours, everybody basically does the same thing. And, um, and, and, and that's where the story, you know, starts. And, um, and of course the muster, when you go to your muster station, like you would on a regular cruise, that was part of a safety thing as well. That if something would happen, if something out of story would happen that you would, you know, there would be an emergency, you know, what would you do? But also things going on in the story, if something happens, you know, that's where you would congregate. And, and so, um, everybody talks about how small the star cruiser is and it really does only have like a hundred rooms and you know the rooms are you know from three to you know eight people but there's only a couple of rooms handful of rooms that will hold you know more than four people so you're only looking about 250 300 people on a cruise right so everybody fits into that atrium you know because when you're doing that main story at the end you know, everybody is in there together. And when you do the muster, yeah. everybody is in there together. Um, but, uh, and there was a nice little shop that you could go in and, you know, do some shopping and buy, and everything was um, in universe. It was in the story. You know, you weren't buying something that had Disney World on it. It was yeah. <laughs> Sandrilla Starline and, you know, the Halcyon and, you know, that type of thing. So, um, but, you know, we, we, we did the, and you, we actually did like a little tour, you know, one of the crew members would take you on a tour of the ship and you really were only on about two levels as far as things going on in the story. Mm-hmm. Um, there were about three, maybe four levels of, of, uh, rooms yeah, with the rooms, um, with the, your stateroom and our stateroom, all, all of our staterooms were together, the whole CWK group. We were just one right after the other, which was nice. nice yeah. And we were on um, one of the main floors where the activities uh, were going on. So that was really nice. We didn't have to do a lot of extra walking, um, you know, up and down or riding the elevator or, or whatnot. But but you really did start that story right after muster. You're, you know, you're answering those questions like Chas said, and, and you're going through and, and our group – we all did, you know, very different things. And, and what was fun was at the end of the evening, um, you know, after you, you did missions, you, they had two different seating times for dinner, um, their activity, you know, and there's a, there's the, um, the, the, uh, the dinner show by Gaia. Um, Mm -hmm. and so one of the missions was getting Gaia onto the ship, um, you know, so that was just then that started right off the bat during muster uh, and during the captain's reception um, and just, you know, different little things uh, like that just going on throughout the evening. And, and, you know, you're, you were constantly, I know it sounds bad. People talk about going into the parks and having to always use your phone, but in this case, you really did. You had mm-hmm. to have that data pad out because that's what propelled you through the story. And, uh, so you're always looking and it would ding if you had a message, you know, or whatever. And, 
and you would respond and from that you know do and, and but like Chaz said it might be a group of people and you go oh I'm gonna go see what those people are doing and you just kind of walk over and get in the group and follow them around and do this or that and and one of the things that everyone was given everyone had a specific halcyon uh, magic band mm, you know okay. so you know with the RFID that was the other way that they were tracking where you were and how close you were to you know certain characters and and so forth but um but by monday evening after all the missions were done we'd had dinner um and everything was kind of quiet the bulk of our cwk group headed to the sublight lounge and you know <laughs> took over a booth and a and a pulled a couple of tables over and chairs and you know we we closed down the sublight lounge while dan's 10 year old son mason was over playing sabak at the sabak table he was the sabak king and um you know just it, it it i i will tell you we we sat around and, and we uh, recorded our thoughts for the day and dan put it both nights both uh the first night and the second night we closed down the sublight lounge both nights uh with our group and i still haven't gone back and listened to those two podcasts you know i i think it, it's too it's one of those things it's like you know people say too soon yeah too it's too soon, soon. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, let let it close down first, and then <laughs> yeah, give it a couple months, and then yeah. go back when it's you know you've had time to process to relive yes. some of those memories again. I mean, I can understand for those people at home that maybe had their trepidations, not because of like the cost and stuff like that, but how much there is to do at the Halcyon, right? It sounds like just from both of your experiences already that you've shared so far that, <laughs> I mean, you could do the gambit of literally doing everything or doing nothing and just like, there's something to do for everybody on this. But at the same time, you're like, I'm one of those people where I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be doing this. And like, you try to pack in too much and that could almost be overwhelming to a large degree too. But I think you both did it the right way for yourselves. And, you know, I think, you know, it sounds like you both, at least on the first day, had such a great time. And obviously, you're still willing to talk about it. So yeah. it sounds like it was a wonderful experience so far. And the fact that you got to do it with, you know, people of the community, friends that you know, and you've met at celebrations and other mm -hmm. conventions, and to have this experience with them, too, who are also like like minded Star Wars fans. I mean, that's just icing on the cake when it comes to all this. Like, you're not just meeting random strangers on a cruise. You're there with some of your best buds, right? Right, it, exactly. And, you know, we had all talked or texted. Some of us had, had met, like you said, at celebrations or whatever before. But a lot of us, it was just from the CWK Live and, and you know, talking back and forth on that like we all do on Monday nights and and um, being in the CWK Cafe and, and sharing things there. And, you know, so... We did do a meetup the night before the cruise uh, over at Disney Springs. And nice. so that was, and it was really good because, you know, it's like you knew, you knew the names of some people and you sort of knew the face from a little teeny tiny picture on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, oh yeah, there. And, and um, so it's, it, it was kind of like, um, it, it was just like having a family reunion and you hadn't seen it, everybody for 20 years. You know, we just all just immediately, which made it just that much more fun um, once we got on to the, to the Halcyon. Um, it, but even like on, on the second day, you, you go to Batu, and the same thing, it's like whatever you had done the first day in the first evening, those missions, then that propelled you through what you did on Batu. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of people had the question and I was one of them when they, you know, when all this first was advertised, I thought, why would I want to go to Batu? I, I go to Batu all the time. Right. For yeah. somebody who doesn't. Yeah. Great. But, but then you realize that's part of the story. Mm -hmm. You know, that propels what you did the evening before you have specific missions to do. Plus you get a lightning lane for rise. You get a lightning <laughs> lane for smugglers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> that didn't hurt. Of course, Smugglers was down that morning. It didn't. It mm -hmm. didn't. It didn't pop up. It was until down for a, a few hours. Yeah, almost like almost noon. I I know we were over there when it when it came back online, and I'm like texting Dan and a bunch of them. Yeah, everyone get on, on. now. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, come this way. So, um, you know, so that, but you would, but you literally on on, on the house on at Batu, you just you would pass each other and. 
and then at the end, both the evenings at the end of the evening, we all would kind of talk about, well, what did you do today? What were your mm-hmm. missions? What did you get to see? And, and everybody, you know, some things we did together or we did similar um, experiences, but there were so many things that like, I think I was one of the few that, that did the hiding Chewbacca. Um, right, you know, so yeah. everybody's like, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> che- Chewie was on the, on the Halcyon how soon, <laughs> you know, so depending on what, you know, and that's where I was kind of on the resistance path to begin with before I went, you know, sort of full Jedi. Um, you know, so yeah, it was, it, it was, it was, it was interesting to, to come back as a group and talk about what we had right. done. Yeah. It's almost like you were selling each other a, a reason to go back on again because you're like, Oh, you did this. That would have been so cool to do. I wish I could do that. Well, maybe next time I do this path and maybe I get to do that type of experience later on. I liked what you asked or what you, you noted um, a few seconds ago where you're like, um, Batu is a different experience based off of your choices here. And I'm very intrigued to explore that a little further here. So Chaz, how did the Batu um, of it all play into your mix and match, if you will, of different choices throughout the course of your experience? You, right? you just don't know what you just asked, Anthony. <laughs> so... Where I chose to do my like multi path story line, I quite literally got sent multiple different places and was constantly running around uh, doing these three missions or the three storylines. But I, honestly, I got them done pretty fast. The rest of my day was spent doing all of the normal batu missions that mm-hmm. are just there to do whenever you're there with the data pad and so multiple times the group saw me walking just all around and just back and forth uh <laughs> just doing all these different missions I, I i noticed that on the data pad you can like you can get outfits for your character uh that just kind of display and you can get titles uh and there was an inventory thing where you can get items and my curiosity was piqued. And so I ended that day getting back on the ship with maybe 15 outfits, seven <laughs> titles and a bunch of stuff in my inventory, just from all the stuff I was doing. I don't think anybody did as much as he did on the two of our, of our group. Like we were it. lucky. Some of us were lucky enough that we got the missions, the Halcyon missions done, but at, I have an older phone and the evening before there were a couple of things I thought, Oh, that didn't quite work the way it was supposed to and that was one of the things on the first day is like you know do a data pad orientation mm-hmm. you know, before sort of the story started and i thought okay it's fine well when i got to batu i could not do anything like it was mm-hmm. not coming through and and uh tom gross was had had the same issue the evening before and so Dan had said to both of us, go to services, customer service, and they will give you another data pad. So, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm on bed too. Nothing is working. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, this all the time. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know I need a new phone. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to have to go back onto the Star Cruiser. But, but there were crew members there in the entry way. Um, and they had a little a little cargo case, um, basically a little suitcase, and had all these uh, small, you know, iPhones in them. And she just, we just put in my um, my Disney MDE identification, popped it up, rolled with it. She said, "Put your phone away, you know, she, you put your your data pad away. Don't take it out unless you're going to take hollows or something. And um, you know, they're not photos when you're on the house on they're hollows, mm-hmm. and." Um, you know, so, but she said, do everything on this so that there won't be, and then, then I was fine. It worked great. So, um, you know, but it, it does, it, you know, propels you through everything, but, um, but yeah. And, and so now when we go over to bed too, it's like, oh, we need to scan some of these things, you know, it's, it's uh, a lot of fun, but yeah, yeah, we were just, I mean, I could even keep up with where he was at. I didn't even try. I'm like, I'm going to go do my own thing. And, and that's what everybody was doing. Like, you might see a couple people together here or there, but then you saw a lot of us just, we were just out by ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, just doing whatever the mission was that we needed to do. So, and you had to be back on like the, 
but two opens up at eight thirty for house young people and and so you could you could transport over whenever and basically your transfer you may have seen this online but it's a big box truck oh um, really they, yeah because the house that you know, the actual building is a little bit it's it's right behind batu but it's still a little bit of a distance and so you know you had to you had to to get onto a shuttle to go from the ship down to the planet Mm-hmm. So, but it was basically a big box, box truck um, oh, that they, but the, but the, yeah, yeah, you felt it too. I mean, you felt <laughs> like you're in the back of a box truck, <laughs> but, but it's also how you should feel if you're coming through atmosphere, you know, coming from space down yeah. to, you know, uh, a planet. Some turbulence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little bit of turbulence here and there, but, uh, but they, you know, the inside of it, I mean, you, if you didn't know you were in a box truck, you wouldn't know what, I mean, it, mm. they, it was very nice. And, but it. I think it uh, maybe 10, 12 people at a time to transfer you over. So I'm then, and it took about 10, 15 minutes by the time you loaded on and got over there and you know, walked through the pathway and got out and, and the entryway, I know you did a thing on, on, um, on galaxy's edge a couple of weeks ago, but right where the Thai echelon and the first order, um, stormtrooper store is in, mm-hmm. in galaxy's edge East, you know, of course is where we're at is this big open area and that's your entrance in and out. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it now, but uh, people, well, people will go in there and sit and get out of the sun is what yeah, they'll do exactly. when, when the Halcyon's not uh, on, sh- on shore there. But, but, um, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to get back to the ship. I'm just going to take an hour out of my day. And, but luckily the crew member was like, Oh no, no, we can do that here. And, you know, and then I was off and running again, but, but you had to be back um, by four like the last um, cargo or the last, you know, the last shuttle left Batu at four o'clock and you had to, you know, be on that last shuttle, be back. We got back in time for dinner, like we are for lunch. We had done all of our missions and so we're like, we're going to go back and we're going to eat lunch in, in the, in the dining room and, you know, enjoy that. You know, right, different yeah. kind of food. I mean, it was just fantastic. Took that up while you still can. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'd let, you know, and we're like, oh, we all want to go back just to have that food. Um, and then, you know, then you were able to run around the ship a little bit. You had a few missions, but, but everybody had to be back by four. And we just kind of laughed. We were out in the atrium about 4.15, 4.30. And here come people through the, ele- off the elevator, the, you know, the main elevator that you came up when you, when you loaded, you know, when you, mm-hmm. um, when you left. And, and so the only thing that we could think was um, they missed the last transport and they had to get an Uber to come back, you know, because wow. they don't like, if you're not there for that, just like a regular yeah, they're not cruise gonna ship, exactly. they're not going to wait for you. If you're not there, you got to find your own way back to, to the Star Cruiser. So <laughs> <laughs> we're like, yeah, okay. it's a bit easier to, to be lost uh, in, in uh, on bat two than as opposed to like, say, Castaway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a little easier to call for an Uber that way. But totally. Anyway. And then, but then when you got back on, um, you had a little bit of downtime, but like I said, you could still do some of your missions and, and do some things and then, and then dinner. And then once both uh, dinner seatings are done, you know, then it's, you know, full blown, you know, the finale. But one of the great things that we were able to do because of uh, our fantastic travel agent that we had, you know, she was able to put all of us together for the bridge training um, on the first night where you go in and you learn how to do all the different things on, there's like four different areas on the bridge to, to do stuff. And again, there's a, you know, the storyline gets started, you know, up there. And then that comes into play. Then the next day when you, when you might have to go on the bridge and, and help smuggle the Thai echelon up there, you know, or help smuggle, um, Ray on, or, you know, smuggle the coaxium that you got. I mean, there's just all the, you're fighting Thai fighters, (laughs) all these, all these different things that you can do on the, that you'll do on the bridge the second night. Um, and then when we, when we got back from Batu, I guess about what, four, four o'clock or so, we had our lightsaber training. And so it was a, a nice size room, 20 people fit in. And again, our travel agent had it set up with, um, with the Star Cruiser uh, reservation crew that we were all in lightsaber training together. 
and the Sajas are the ones who do the lightsaber training. So you have a lightsaber and it's kind of like the, you know, Luke on A New Hope when he's yeah. battling, you know. <laughs> so, but there's these like beams coming out from the wall and you're moving your, your um, lightsaber to, you know, to, to deflect them. And, and then you have a shield training, you have shields that you use. And, and, and so everybody, it's just like, a, everybody takes turns and you're all in there together. And, and the Saja at the beginning, he was saying his normal spiel, I'm sure of, well, you may not know one another now, but when you, after you have done your lightsaber training, you'll get to know one another. And we just all burst out laughing. And he's like, <laughs> oh, what did I say? And we're like, no, 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 you don't understand. We are one big group. And he's yeah. like, excuse me? <laughs> How did this <laughs> <And> happen? From, <laughs> yeah, from, from what we could tell and talking to a couple other cast members, we don't know that that had ever really happened before, that everybody... Mm in the lightsaber training was one big group, but he was great. He just, he, he kind of took that information and just ran with it, you know, when we were in there. And then after we were finished, he, we all got together on the other side of the hallway and, and took, that was, I think that was the only picture we had of our entire group at one time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think he so took a, too. yeah, he took a picture of the, of the entire group for us. So it was, it was really, but he was like, this was really cool. Everybody already knew it. Yeah. Cause we were like taking pictures of each other and videos and, and they were both, and there was another Saja in there helping him. And they were, they, the looks on their faces were like, this yeah. has never happened yeah. before. <laughs> so I think we gave them an extra little, you know, wow. <laughs> Yeah, that, you, you blew their one. minds. They're like, this is possible? Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the immersion that I'm hearing from both of you in terms of how this really plays out to being your own Star Wars story between both the the Halcyon itself and on Batu. And I also love the image that you painted of just everyone just kind of like seeing Chaz go back and forth doing various things. They're like, there he goes again. There he goes again. There he is. Yep. What's he what's yep. he doing now? <laughs> um, I slept pretty good that night. I bet I oh, bet <laughs> we all did. I bet everyone was really tired after and then you at least to get one day of this. So, yeah. Yeah. You have to you either yeah. have to leave or you have to get up and do it all again the next day, which again, you're riding on pure adrenaline and just like yeah. the joy of doing this. So yeah. like um, I can totally imagine, yeah, the, the feeling of being tired afterwards. At least you didn't have too far to go versus other people True. getting on like yeah. big car Well, rides. what was really, what was funny is most of our group, um, I think there were maybe only a couple of people that actually left, left. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, um, some of them were staying a couple more days on. I mean, you have to Disney almost, and, yeah. 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 Who's so. to say like actually like staying at Disney <laughs> and going to the parks is a reprieve from <laughs> doing the oh, yeah. Star Cruiser. But evidently it sounds we, like it's just time. We were spent. exhausted. Yeah. We were um, exhausted. Fascinating. Well, I want to be spoiled now. Um, I want to hear about the overall story that you're supposed to get this battle between the resistance and the first order that takes place while you're on the the star cruiser so if you can Chaz, can you kind of explain or walk me through kind of like what the overall arc of story that i'm supposed to be getting if i did the two-day cruise here like what are some of the big things that happen story-wise honestly she's the better person as she's got that <laughs> fair, on... fair, fair enough i know you've got notes mary so to lay it on me too <laughs> Copious notes, as, as my friend tell, tell me what I need to know for canon purposes. What happens on this on this? Uh, well, ship? Ba basically, the story of the Halcyon is you are going on its 275th anniversary voyage. That is the story for every single voyage. Okay. okay? And so the the captain welcomes you on, the cruise director welcomes you on, but very quickly you have this lieutenant from the First Order who has, you know, barged onto um, mm. the Halcyon, and they are looking for resistance. You know, uh, I mean, it, it's it's set really between kind of the same time frame that Batu obviously is set in between Episode 8 and Episode 9 of the movies, right? And so um, the First Order are looking for resistance people. Um, they... You know, they they uh, take the the art the uh, it's like an R two droid. They take a, the mm -hmm. droid um, hostage, basically, <laughs> and um, you know, and in the meantime, we're trying to get 
Chewbacca on the on the ship. We're trying to get Ray on the ship. Um, we're trying to steal Coaxium to you know to you know, to be able to go places wherever you need to go. Whatever. Sure. Um, I mean, it's just all these different little storylines uh, as it goes through, um, and you, know, you have stormtroopers that are patrolling and and on the ship. Um, and the, Lieutenant Croy is the the main uh, First Order fella, and and there are multiple people who play all these different roles. Like obviously, they have many different people. Uh, and the only thing that that really took me out of the immersion that when he showed up was because I had watched some of the videos. He was the original mm -hmm. Sammy, who, oh. and Sammy <laughs> is your mechanic who you are led to believe is just a dumb mechanic mm. but he's really working for the resistance and he's really you know quite an intelligent you know person so he was like he was the original sammy and i knew i follow him on social media and i knew <laughs> oh. he and his wife had just had a baby and he had stepped back from the star cruiser and and then he's up there and he's the, the lieutenant i'm like hold on you know so that kind of threw me out for a second right. which where watching videos can, can do <laughs> but uh, but then it but he was he is so good and this cruise he put up a thing on his social media yesterday the cruise right now is his last cruise he he's not going to be on it mm -hmm. for these next two but um you know so so it's all about um trying to get the resistance information and data and and like chewy and ray you know from one place to another um you know, it kind of like when you're doing um, Star Tours, you know, yeah. and you've got the, you know, the, who, you know, who, who is, who is the spy, you know, kind of, you know, who's the rebel spy kind of a thing. Um, and, and then it just, it culminates at the end, you know, after both dinner shows or after both dinners have been finished, um, it culminates in the atrium with Kylo Ren coming on board and Ray being on board because Ray's been there for mm -hmm. a bit. We smuggled her on, you know, early on, and and Chewbacca, and you know, and getting the droid free, and um, so you have this epic battle um, along the top of the atrium. The mm -hmm. there's a balcony um, around you know two full sides, the front and one side of the atrium, and you know, passengers cannot go up there. That's the, that's basically the stage. Yeah. And okay. So, yeah. So Kylo and, and Ray are up there. And, and if you saw the video back from a D23, what, three or four years ago of, of uh, Josh DeMauro holding the yep. lightsaber and the oh, yeah. lightsaber going up. Well, and that's, then that's what it was for. And so when you first see Ray, she ignites the lightsaber but she, but she doesn't fight with that one. Like that's it. And they never oh, did practical. quite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, and they never did quite get that. Tra that transition was a little wonky and they never did quite get it. it was out. I've seen little, that little yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still a little wonky looking, but it is what it is. But, um, but you know, they, I mean, it was great. It, it was, it was like you're in the movie at one point, Ray's on one end of the balcony and, and Kylo's on the other end and he like, force pulls her so you know you know she's on some type of a something you know on the floor that's pulling her across kind of a thing but it looks like he's force pulling her to, you know toward him and and just you know there's blaster fire and and the atrium gets messed up parts of the ceiling come falling down of course they're hanging on on cables or whatever yeah. um, there's blast things in the you know on the walls and and um and of course our little Sammy, who everybody thinks is a dumb little mechanic, mm. and he's you know this little introvert, you know he he um, he pops up and is sort of the savior, you know, of all he's he's disguised as a stormtrooper and and you know helps to take control of the ship back and and that type of thing. But through the whole two days, all of these characters, like Chaz said, all of these characters have made connections with the passengers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there are times when the passengers are pulled in, literally pulled into the story, um, you know, the, and it's crazy. The, these, these cast members, 
they remember you. And like both yeah. Chaz and I both had made up names so that we didn't put anywhere into any of our information. And the cast members remembered your made up name. Amazing. Um, it, it was amazing. Um, whatever little tricks they taught them, you know, to be able to do that. I, I don't know, but it was, it, it was crazy. Um, but you, you know, so you, that you get pulled in and, and depending, at, you know, at one point I was standing beside Wraith, who's kind of a little scoundrel kind of a guy. He helps smuggle things onto mm. the ship. He and, was also the main smuggler dude for yeah. uh, the storyline. Right, right. If you were a smuggler, that's who you connected with. And so the captain was giving him a rough time leading up to that finale and in the atrium. And I was standing pretty close to him. And she was like having him, you know, pull out his pockets and do all that kind of stuff. And I said, well, you might need to look in his boots. And he looked at me and he went, excuse me? <laughs> oh, he called you and, out. <laughs> and the, yeah, he did. And the captain went, yes, Wraith, what is it? What, what is in your yeah. boots? I mean... They just like that obviously wasn't scripted because I said it, mm -hmm. you know, so they would just run with anything and everything. I mean, it, it's the level of, and they're equity actors, like the people who were doing all those, those are the, the folks that are called equity actors, you know, those okay. are your performers mm -hmm. and the level of their professionalism and, and, um, I mean, they're, they're just, they're amazing. It's, they're just amazing to watch. I mean, it's like you are immersed in, in, in the story. You are part of that story and nothing, nothing breaks that immersion. I mean, they will not let anything break that immersion. That's so cool. I mean, I think you, you paid for it too, right? I like <laughs> you oh, yeah. paid top dollar for this. So like you should feel like every aspect and every minute yeah. and moment of this two and a half day excursion uh, is a full-on Star Wars experience. So it sounds to me like they actually lived 100% up to that uh, to that did. tall order that's placed in front of them. They did. I, you know, and I, I think some of them um, have have said that they had to step back, you know, for a period of time because it was, I'm sure, emotionally and mentally exhausting yeah, for it. them as well. But um, and and inside the the state rooms, you know, they were they were they were very much a, a space stateroom and you had a little droid on your, on your wall in a pad and you came in in the evening or whenever you came in, there might be a little light on, on the pad on the wall. And that would, mm -hmm. that meant that she had something to tell you. And so she helped to propel the story as well. And at night you could ask for a lullaby. You could ask for a bedtime story um, I saw some people, I had no idea that you could even do this, but if you let the reservation desk know ahead of time that you were maybe there on a, on a wedding anniversary, mm -hmm. she would renew your wedding vows. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, it, it, it's, yeah. And if you watch the, the last, um, well, not this past week, but last week's, well, not obviously not this week's so it's not on yet. But two weeks ago, episode five of Ahsoka, and she's laying in a, um, in a bunk. And, mm -hmm. and Chaz and I both went, mm, Halcyon, <laughs> because it reminded you a lot of the bunks, you know, uh, in the room. So, and you didn't have, again, you didn't have a window. The only win window you had was this simulation, of, and you looked out into space, and you would see... You'd see jumping up to, into hyperspace every now and then, or you, you or it'd be just regular space. Somebody said at one point, if you watched it in the middle of the night, that Purgle would actually no float way. by. I, we never saw the Purgle, but yeah. Oh, like, I hope someone has a video of it online now so that I can check it they, out. I'm sure they do. Confirm. <laughs> yes. uh, that would be so cool to see. Um Wow. Wow. There's just so much. And obviously I think we could do full deep dives on just about every aspect of this, but the unfortunate yeah. thing is that the Halcyon is closing at the end yeah. of September here. So, I mean, as much as fun as we've had talking about this and sharing your experiences on it, like I said, you will be only a handful of people that have actually been able to say that you've been on this incredible um, adventure, endeavor, experience, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's certainly more than just a hotel. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. I want to, 
kind of get your last thoughts uh, uh, on the house yawn here. How much of a bummer is it, first off, that it is closing? And what do you think or hope that Disney does with the facility now? Uh, obviously, it's just going to be an empty space if they use, do nothing with it. But, you know, Disney's good with about repurposing things. So, Chaz, what do you think that the house yawn goes from here? <sighs> My mom and I both talked a few times about like maybe they'll because there's the hoop to do review mm-hmm. at was Fort Wilderness. Yes, Fort Wilderness. Yes. Um, something kind of like that where they u- utilize the dining room and it's like a you make a reservation, you go for dinner, and there's like a, there's a show that happens that is some kind of story, or you can just make reservations with the park and. You meet uh, a cast member at the Halcyon loading area in Batu, mm-hmm. and they take you aboard for uh, activities, whether that be lightsaber training, bridge training, any of those. Just some way to like keep the Halcyon, but at the same time, not as it was, but as something new. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that would be really. I mean, I'm all big fan of the idea of like it just being a, uh, um. A story that you you know you, a, a dinner time adventure if you will right mm-hmm. you get to see a dinner in a movie uh well you get to see a dinner in a live star war play out in front of you which i think you know it's kind of what you're alluding to there yeah. mary do you josh have anything De- else to add on that front well josh tomorrow has said who's uh, the head of uh, disney parks and experiences you know he he made the hint a couple of about a month or so ago at at some um conference or activity or or whatever that that there were there would be something to come, yeah. um, but until because it's a tax write off and and I don't I'm not mm. I have no knowledge of legal things I just know from what I've heard but because it is a tax write off there is a certain amount of time that obviously they can't do anything with it and I don't think because it is a tax write off that it can ever come back exactly as it is right yeah. but but like Chaz said you know. We and so many people online have talked about it as well. Um, there are things that that they can probably probably do. I mean, we paid to do to build a lightsaber at Savi's. We paid mm-hmm. to build a, a droid in the Droid Depot. So you know, having lightsaber training, having the bridge training, like Chas said, having um, you know lunch or dinner in the dining room, um, and. You know, so even like with the lunches and the dinners, maybe they just go over and get transported up like we did, yeah. you know, not come through Batu, but, you know, just go up into the main terminal and and um, and do the elevator up to the atrium type of thing. Um, I don't know. They they have they've hinted that it's that there may be something you know, more to come, but obviously they can't really say i guess for legal purposes yeah but you know what's really sad is that during celebration you know we all kind of you included we were all kind of talking about all the different things that were talked about at celebration Mm -hmm. in london this year and when i watched that panel um again they that parks panel what the the and i can't remember her name but the the one um Imagineer who said, "Please don't ca- call it a hotel." Yep. <laughs> and of course they and, and of course they hadn't announced that it was being closed. And they they said, "We have things that we are we are, we have in 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 the plans to change and to modify and to do. Stay tuned." And um, so I thought, "Oh, great, you know." But then what? A month later, oh, the hammer drop. That it's, yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I don't know if maybe some of those things that maybe that's what Josh Demaro was pre- talking about. That maybe some of those things that they were thinking about making changes to it is what they're maybe going to do here in the next you know um, year or two. At one point, I know they were saying that it was going to be like a two year write off. But yeah. I think they backed off of that. I think it they they backed off to maybe just a one year. I, I'm not sure. You know, that's I didn't do any research on it. And I apologize to the listeners <laughs> if I got it wrong. But uh, but we know it's it's at least a one year write off. So probably nothing can be even talked about until um, 
October 1 of 2024, you know, right. Disney has a fiscal year of October to October 1 to, the, to September 30, which is why it's closing on mm-hmm. September the 30th. That's the end of their fiscal year. So, which people are like, that's a weird time to end, but you know, that's how it is. Uh, business is as business does as, uh, yeah. as, as no one has once said, but uh, <laughs> I've now coined the term. It's, it's so sad. And you know, for, for a lot of people, it was the price tag, but for a lot of people, they were also saving up their pennies to, in order to they do were. this endeavor. And, you know, it was only open for a few years, hasn't allowed everybody the opportunity who were actually trying to save up and to do such a thing. But, you know, I, it's, if Star Wars teaches us about hope and optimism, and I think that I'm choosing to look on the bright side here and to see if there is a potentially bright future here for the uh, both the you know, Star Wars in the parks and for this type of immersive experience. And they will learn lessons from this, what worked, what didn't work. And I have a strong sense that they will utilize this IP in some way, shape or form for this type of endeavor again in the future. And, um, you know, I'm just glad that we'll both be down in the bright sunny Florida to to experience it it as soon as possible uh, that we can. Um, so I thank you both so much for coming on to share about your experiences with the house on and, and a little bit here to, to mourn its passing too, in some regards. Absolutely. Um, so Chaz, where can the fine folks find you online if they want to reach out or just to share their experiences about the house on too, or just to ch- chat star Wars. The exact same thing. My mom was going to say here in a second. <laughs> But he really doesn't get online too much like that as far as, but he, hey, he I respect he's that. like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's online some, but not, but, uh, but coffee, you yeah, know, the, the coffee with Kenobi, um, the CWK cafe, um, the two of us are on it a lot. So that's always a good place um, uh, to find, to find us. And, you know, from there you can always you know, do like a private message or whatever. Um, I'm on Twitter X some, <laughs> um, at, at, at Mary underscore Purdue, but, um, not a lot. And if, you know, whatever, um, and, and I do some things on Instagram, um, but, uh, but the CWK cafe is the best place to, to connect with either one of us. Absolutely. What a great plug for the CWK and the, and the live show too, because it's a lot of fun over there. So everybody, uh, all listeners that aren't already active, uh, members of that forum, be sure to go and, uh, join as you are able. So thank you both so much for coming on the show. We will certainly have you back on again in the very near future here. Once these strikes end, we're able to talk about some other things that are going on in the galaxy far, far away. Uh, But until then, I also thank the listeners at home for for joining us for this episode. Of course, we'll be back next time next week with a brand new episode about something in the galaxy far, far away. Uh, Yet to be determined, but we'll get there. Um, And until then, may the force be with you and take care. Thank you.